Three hot tips for analyzing serviced accommodation deals. My name's Ryan from Next Level Property Investing, teaching entrepreneurs just like you how to acquire property fast. So for me, there's three really important things that we need to be doing to make sure that a serviced accommodation works. Number one, check how many hotels are in the area. Hotels spend absolute fortunes on doing research before they decide to open the doors, before they decide to lay a brick or set them up with the furniture, the bars, etc., etc. You know, so if there's a hotel in the area or there's several hotels in the area, for me, that's always a good sign. I like to at least see uh, one or two within a mile or two and within a five mile radius I like to see a lot. Um, this shows that there's good demand for hotels, there's good demand for the travel accommodation style setup and it really gives me the confidence that it, service accommodation can work and that's one of the biggest things that I've relied on over the years and has ultimately stood me in good test. The second thing that I do is um, Airbnb. Now, Airbnb has a good platform, so you can actually go in and if you know what you're doing, you can dig around it a bit and you can actually get a bit of confidence in bookings and um, you know how properties work. So what I tend to do is just put my postcode in from where the property is that we're looking to use as service accommodation and I will then do a, a search on similar sort of numbers. So if I've got a place that's gonna sleep eight people, I'm gonna search for eight people. If similarly, if it's four people, four people, and just try and keep it like for like as best we can. So what you then do is it gives a map and it shows you exactly what properties are renting for what prices and you can actually click into those adverts. What I do is I click into the adverts. I wanna see how they're operating. So I look for two things. One is what do their calendars look like going forward? So how busy are they? How booked up are they? Now most operations probably book up within 20, 30 days. So if they've got nothing in the next 30 days, that's a worrying sign. If they've got, you know, bookings for the next two weeks, then maybe nothing after, I'd be quite comfortable with that because especially now after COVID, a lot of people are booking later, last minute, and um, you know, you, so you, you wouldn't see the diaries as full as they maybe once were before because a lot of people may have lost money through um, not being on the right cancellation policies when they booked their holidays last time or their trips and ultimately everyone's a bit more cautious now. So we're certainly seeing a lot more last minute bookings or a lot more week to week bookings than we are prior to COVID where we were getting a bit more longer term or long far out bookings. So um, check the calendars, have a good snoop around and you'll just get a good feeling for, you know, if, it, if there's a couple of calendars that look full and a couple that are empty, well, how long have the empty properties been operating? Are they new to the business? Now this brings me on to my final point. So how can you find out how long these things have been operating for? Well, the hotels is quite easy. You know, you can jump on the websites, you can jump on the searches on Google and it'll tell you exactly how long they've been operating for. Again, the longer the better, under the same brand name, the better. That means that there hasn't been a change, you know, unless there's been a sort of national um, closure of a hotel chain. If say, for example, a travel inn's opened, but then it's closed and then it became a holiday inn and then it closed, um, there's a good chance that that means that maybe that hotel isn't working well for them because these type of brands that are still operating, if they're profitable, they'll keep them open. So the next thing for Airbnb for me is reviews. If you have a look at people's reviews and you can see how long they've been operating. So not everyone's gonna leave a review, but you can go back, you know, several years, um, you know, and you can see what the sort of scattergun of reviews are. So are they getting two, three a month? Are they getting 10 a month? Are they getting one a month? You know, and that in itself can give you the confidence. Now, just remember, not everyone reviews and not everyone books via Airbnb. So if they've got, say, for example, three reviews on Airbnb, it probably means that they've also probably got three or four reviews on booking.com, which means they've probably had seven or eight stays in that place across that particular month, which isn't a bad occupancy rate, especially if the average stays three or four days per stay. So, that's how um, you can really you know, find out whether an Airbnb or a serviced accommodation unit is gonna work for you. Um, you know, obviously there's a bit more involved in it, but if you want some quick tips, they're my top three on how you can find out whether serviced accommodation is gonna work for your location, your property, or the area that you just may be looking to get started in. Don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, videos like this are getting dropped every day with loads of great tips on. Uh, don't forget to comment and share. Let me know what you want to hear about. And if you want to take your game to the next level, nextlevelpropertyinvesting.com. Book a call with me. We'll have a quick chat and I'll tell you exactly how I can take your property game to the next level. Take care. Have an awesome day.